Whenever you say chickadoo, it just reminds me of chickadee. Chickadee dee 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 dee. The noises that the chickadees make. I love chickadees. They're so cute. It's interesting how many bird names are... They... Some of them mimic the sounds that the bird themselves make. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. This is the lady that wanted us to bring food baskets out to the workers. Mm -hmm. Worker? Honestly, none of these quests are very meaningful, hence my dismissal of it. Wait, yeah, a this sensor? guy was spooked by a, uh, a noise out on the beach. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're good. Are you finally going to show everyone Colony 6? Oh, right. We can go to that real quick. Okay. So, I worked up Colony 6 a bunch because, I don't know, it felt like I should. Why give you something that you could upgrade extensively if you were never going to do it? So far, it very much seems like the kind of thing for crazy completionists and not for me. Mm -hmm. So, give him a tour. What new has... Heck, if I know, I actually haven't up. looked at this place. Oh, some of the trees. So... Oh, those are new. Yeah, that just randomly will pop out resources. So, they've added a lot of trees, a lot of buildings. Because I think they added, what, markets? Yeah, and a farm, farms. some trading things. I mean, it's not a giant dirt pit, really. Little parks? That's the, uh... That's the real answer. Oh, gardens? Look at that. Yeah. Like, it actually looks kind of nice. Now, would you say it's nicer than Colony 9? Or do you like Colony 6? I like Colony 9 better. This is kind of boring. It's just a bunch of box buildings. Yeah, Colony 9 did have a lot of, like, overarching bridges and that giant lake. Yeah, and it was built high above a giant lake and some other things. Mm -hmm. So, like, hard to beat Colony 9. Realistically, I think no matter what, though, it is a little disappointing. Just because, like, I really wish they had redone some of the uh, the visuals for this game. Like, some more. Because they, they upscaled them, yeah. But I wanted them to have actually, like... Done better and Shulk need to be loving. <laughs> well, that's a ship I did not expect to come behind victory. Okay, well, let's go do plot. Hopefully it won't be raining anymore. Two. Technically, did the Bionis lose the fight? They both lost simultaneously? They both lost simultaneously, but the Mekonis had an arm cut off, whereas he cut into the ribcage of the Bionis. Yeah. And still has his sword embedded in the Bionis. Judging by Zanza. I mean, they said that the Bionis was going to reawaken mm -hmm. somehow. Judging by that, maybe the sword was not actually that big of a deal and the Bionis just got tired. Or, or, Hyantia shut it down. Like, the inhabitants might have shut the whole thing down in order to... I should probably make it daytime so we can see what the heck is going on. Mm-hmm. Get to the other side of this, though. The rotating bulkhead. Oh, right. Yeah, turn the... Can you make it day? Turn because... the sun on! Well, bam! Daytime. Because now we can see... Yeah, what is that? What is that? That's a full-on arm. It looks like another arm. Unless this thing had four arms. Or maybe maybe that's the missing arm over there? No, we're on a missing arm. Yeah, wait, hold up. 
This is a hand. Uh, it's a left hand. Yes, yes. He had his left hand cut off. He was using his right hand to stab. But that's a left hand. Maybe. Can you look at the, um, can you look at the Mechonis again in the drawing? Like, he has all of the, no, that's the Bionis. We're looking at the Mechonis. Like, it's possible it's part of his weird Do you want me to look up the, uh, thing? do you want me to look at the art book? Sure. It, it's possible that the, the Mechonis has more limbs. Because I went and found an English translation of the art book. Uh, between sessions. Like, it's available for people to download because it was never released in English. Unless people are saying that it was rebuilt? Could be. I mean, yeah, they. I, I, I suppose people could have built off of it. So you would think that materials would be finite. That you'd have to reallocate metal from other parts of the Mechanis to make the new arm. Yeah, unless they can fabricate it from ether energy. Now, the fortress was not the new hand. The fortress is in the middle of the sword. That was the place that we fell from. The capital is probably near the thing's head. Okay, main character, characters, materials, story stuff. Are you sure they don't have an art book in this game? I've really liked it how many of the new Switch and Wii games and other games have a gallery for concept art. Are you seeing the two mechs fighting? A little bit. They're not showing me the arm, though. Oops, sorry. I accidentally touched my microphone. I mean, they're super obviously showing the arm on the ground. Mm-hmm. And we saw it get chopped off in the cutscene. Yeah. I mean, chances are we're... Yeah, no, he's got both arms. Can I see? Yeah. Check that. So they rebuilt his arm. Yeah, maybe they did rebuild his arm. There's also some slooty pictures there. What? Uh, in every Xenoblade game, there's alternate costumes. For, uh, mm -hmm. Or at least in the first two, there's alternate costumes for the uh, the ladies in swimsuits. Mm -hmm. And there were some... Uh, some pinups like right immediately and I was like mm -hmm. aw Bionis and Mechonis. Oh, it's so different seeing them from this kind of perspective. We cannot see it from here. But our people are still fighting up there. It's difficult to believe that two such huge things ever fought each other. I wonder how the Machina felt at the time. Must have been horrible. Scary, too. Fear robs us of reason. Out of fear, we commit terrible atrocities and call them acts of self-preservation. Fear gives rise to more fear. A never-ending circle of hatred. Perhaps that circle can be broken. Fear. It must be what's driving this. What's made Egil act this way? Oh. Didn't somebody say that Maynith is just Mechonis? She could be the essence in the same way that Zanza... Yeah. Zanza helped create the Bionis and Maynith was for the Mechonis. But yeah, as for the glow in her eyes, was that Maynith or was that maybe Fiora, she's... but... Well, no, 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 like the inside. Her, yeah, Inside possibly. Fiora. Alright, this is a little bit closer to what I wanted out of Sword Valley. Mm-hmm. Check this business. 
Yeah. So we're inside one of the legs. Yep. We're inside the Mechonis. Just how I imagined it. It's all totally mechanical. It ain't gonna be easy getting up this thing. Egil is at the top. Oh, I don't like how that texture is kind of fading in. Mm hmm In 20 years, maybe they'll remake this game. Or they'll make a new Xenoblade. I mean, I, they keep doing that. Because there's only so many times that you should remake or re-release an old game. True. But I, there's kind of a difference, though. Anything pre-2010 is, I'm going to say, not cursed, but, like, there's such a notable loss in quality that it is mod moderately worth remaking it just to bring it up to modern standards. Not Like, obviously things are going to be ridiculous 10, 20 years from now, but, like, we're hitting the point where most of the advances are going to be on mocap and uh, special effects and, like, environments to some lesser degree. I don't think many 2D games will need to be updated. 3D, though, mm, it depends on the game. Yeah, I I would absolutely agree with that. A lot of 2D games uh, will never need to be re uh, remade uh, unless you want to kind of show it in a different light. Like, I would say Final Fantasy VI, for example. If they were to give it the Final Fantasy VII treatment, I would not complain. Mm -hmm. um, because even though it is perfect right now, I would love to see everything reimagined in full semi-realistic 3D, you know, and, the same style. And that can make sense for the Final Fantasy games if they want to have a consistent look. But, like, not Pokemon. Or... Uh, what, what are some other good 2D games? Yoshi's Island. Kirby. And I think that each of the Legend of Zelda games has its own aesthetic. If you notice, the style changes from game to game to game. I, yeah, I... I well, think. yeah. It, flip side, I really did like uh, Link's Awakening in 3D. I thought that was actually really pretty. Oh yeah, they did remake that. Like, but it still had the isometric feel. Yeah. Gene Forge Saga remake. Ah. Huh. Oh. What's that one? You know, I don't know. I don't think I've ever heard of that game. Mm -hmm. I haven't either. Yeah, then there are games like Mist that don't really need to be remade because they were pre-rendered and gorgeous way Ye back in the day. Yeah, and it would be difficult to remake them without actually... All it would be would be purely kind of cosmetic. At flip side, I did actually really enjoy the uh, Command & Conquer re-release recently. Mm -hmm. uh, like, switching from the old style sprites to the new stuff, like, it really did look better. Unfortunately, the F FMVs looked pretty bad. I was really disappointed to find out that they didn't have really nice cutscenes for the Warcraft 3 yeah. remake. Because the trailers made them look so good, and then they were just land puppets talking to each other supposedly in the in-game cutscenes. That's, yeah, usually. I, that's how it was. I, Blizzard has just burned so many bridges lately. I don't, I, like, I'm kind of looking forward to the new World of Warcraft expansion, if only because, like, it'll be something for us to do together. But, if it wasn't for you, I don't think I'd touch another Blizzard project, product mm. at this point. It's There's just so many other things that, like, excite me more. The only reason why I really like World of Warcraft is the world building and the lore, and then also the fact that they, they're they really going to add a lot of character customizations. I suppose what I like about MMOs is the... I like creating a lot of alts. 
so that I can try all the classes. So Gene Forge is an early 2000s isometric turn-based strategy game filled with shapers who manipulate matter to create artificial life for their personal and societal needs. Hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty cool. Interesting. Hence the Gene Forge. Let's see. What other what other games would be good for the kind of remake remaster? I I, I would, would like to see better BioWare games done in the old style of BioWare games, but obviously with Well, they, you're just asking for something new at that point. Uh -huh. I would enjoy them giving like I mean, Knights of the Old Republic could be improved. And I think they actually DMCA'd a fan remaster that had been made. I, you know, I would actually really enjoy them maybe 10 years from now uh, recompiling the entirety of Mass Effect as one game with some, like, modifications to redo the ending. Because, mm -hmm. like, I would enjoy playing a, like, 200 lo hour long mega adventure of Ke uh, Commander Shepard with full mocap, make everything look real nice. <laughs> What's up, Shulk? Look, it's a switch to activate a lift. If we can get it to work, it should take us up. Ricky, want to ride lift? <laughs> we can't. There's no power going to it. Boring! What do we do? Well... If we could find the main power supply... Okay, people, let's get looking. Yeah. If we can connect the power to the switch, we should be able to use the lift. I like how Ricky's reaction is boring. This music is super good. Mm-hmm. Why did we need a cutscene for this? Oh, just to push a button. Why did we need a quest for this? <laughs> Why did we need any of that? Maybe you're going to have to do this multiple times. I guess. And it was a little instructional segment. Watch it be the only one. Also, we didn't have a cutscene for that with the gates back in uh, Sword Valley. No? Mm hmm. Let's see what this does. Did that change any more gears or... Oh, nope. There's that. And Giant it's going to let the force elevator. fields down. Anything over here? Nope. Oh, this music is really pretty. It is super pretty. pretty. Like, I like uh, Gower Plains. But this, I... This is this is my kind of thing. Mhm. Mm it re <laughs> really now. What? Just the quest complete. Like it almost feels condescending. Mhm. Mm you made it up an elevator. Congratulations. You completed your. Uh, you walked ten feet. Now we're pinned on a bridge. I'm not pinned. It's interesting how angelic these creatures look at times. Mm -hmm. Even though there are these machines. Now, it's interesting that there's all this purple. All right, I wanted to check something. I forgot, I had uh, I'd gone on a gift-giving spree. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm trying to make Shulk friends with as many people as possible, specifically Fiora. Because uh, apparently the two of them are good for gem crafting. Uh, but also because I will almost never use Shulk with Fiora or Melia in the same party. Or Riki. Because... Mm -hmm. DPS. I, oh. I wish... I wish you could actually uh, build every character for every role with, like, different benefits. Or two roles, even. Yeah. Because then I... That's interesting. Then I'd be a lot more flexible with what I have. So the other thing I wanted to check is... With my current party... Yeah, they're not very good friends. Let's see, Final Fantasy XII had that. And, like, if no other JRPG comes out... Uh, between now and... What did they have? Hmm? What did 12 have? Oh, anybody could be any class. Ah. It was super flexible. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, know that my friends really enjoyed that one. But if no other, no other like, JRPGs come out and we want to play another JRPG, uh, I would really like to play Final Fantasy 12. Which reminds me, I should check to see if I own it. Because mm. I don't know if I bought it yet. Because uh, I think that might be one of the only things on sale that I don't own. Because I'm not, like, super passionate about playing a whole lot of J JRPGs right now, just because... They, they are very long. <laughs> they're incredibly long. Now that you think about it, aside from the Bioware style RPGs, did they base themselves loosely off of JRPGs? The whole having a party of three and kinda, yeah, being able to like increase your stats and customize their abilities and such. And the only thing that it really had that made it differ from other games was the fact that you had all of these dialogue options and branching choices. I mean, realistically, it was based off of KOTOR, which was based off of Baldur's Gate. But it makes me think of how when people try to describe the JRP genre, it's usually you have a party and you customize them and usually it's turn based but in this is this is more like a what kind of battle system do you think this would be you're you're essentially this real, just this is real time real time but it's not real time action it's real time but you're punching buttons for cooldowns yeah whereas an action rpg would be one where you're actually doing flips and jumps and slashing and your button yeah, hits are Final, your slashes Yeah, Final Fantasy attacks. 15 would be an action RPG. Same thing with Kingdom Hearts. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like a midpoint between turn-based strategy. Well, this is very MMO-like. Yeah, the closest I could almost call it would be an ATB gauge, but that's not, like, quite right. Mm-hmm. It feels very wow. Yep. And I don't personally begrudge it much, because I think this is a much more engaging system, uh, despite its faults. This is more engaging for me than most Final Fantasies. Uh, like, to be totally honest, this is what I wanted out of the... Uh, was it Command Mode in Final Fantasy VII? But mm. instead, Command Mode was actually just the easy mode that, like... It was good, but it was... Well, effectively, they're like, we're going to just let your characters auto-attack for you, and then you occasionally give them commands. And I was like, oh, that doesn't so sound so bad. Also, it's the easiest difficulty. And I was like, what? No. Mm -hmm. But then I, like, you know, got into the actual action combat, and I was like, oh, actually, this, is not so this isn't so bad. It just became this, like, weird aggro management thing that I was not necessarily expecting. As much as I like turn-based combat for strategy's sake... The one thing I dislike about it is that 
you have all of this downtime waiting for things to load in and waiting for characters to announce their attacks and waiting for the animations to go through. Yeah. Whereas this, it feels like you engage, you engage instantly with the enemy, you press a couple buttons, you com you know, you, you have a bunch of attacks, but then you just seamlessly exit combat and go on your merry way. Yeah. Whereas it seems like it's a long sequential endeavor when it comes to turn-based play. I really struggle from playing uh, turn-based games. Yeah, I... Because I think they're usually really boring. Even The in-betweens? Yeah. Like, I like Pokemon, for example, and one of its greatest strengths is, like, you can chew through it in seconds most of the time. You know, most of the fights you just one-shot whatever your opponent is. But then I find myself just running away from battles out of frustration. Yeah, because So that it, I can escape the, the creatures in the tall grass and get to the plot or yeah. to the puzzles and such. I, I know a hot take for some, uh, for some people, but I think Let's Go Eevee is quite possibly the best Pokemon game. <laughs> can I have some of that? Sure. I need some more sugar. More ginger ale. We don't get soda often, but ginger ale is our. I like ginger to. ale, and I like rip beer. No. No. Well, okay. Okay, you didn't worse. die. But yeah, I I really struggle with turn-based games as well. I enjoyed playing Final, uh, not Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest Eleven, but it was so boring. And just like I kind of wanted, just like. Ultimately, playing that game just made me realize how meaningless the gameplay was. Because mm -hmm. it was this, like, big open world with a lot of just fluff side quests that you had to do because they were plot. And it was... It never... None of it felt good. Which game are you talking about Dragon right now? Quest Eleven. Ah. I kind of had the same problem with uh, the recent Digimon games. Like... I played them because it was fun. Well, the to... recent Digimon games, also the human characters looked terrible. They were, in my opinion, they were just bad. They were animated very poorly. The uh, the main reason why I got into them is because I love Digimon. Oh yeah, but, but like, haven't they been focusing more on the humans than having the Digimon as actual characters though? And it's yeah, they they had some of the Digimon as characters in the Hacker's Memory games, mm -hmm. but those were very much like real world where the Digimon were just kind of your Pokemon. Because what always appealed to me about the, the Digimon anime that we watched growing up was that the Digimon were more than just their battle pets. They were their, they were their companions and their friends and their partners and characters in their own right. And many of the villains that they encountered and the anti uh, the anti-heroes like Gatomon and such they were they were fully fleshed out characters in their own right and had their own motivations and their own desires and their own wants and it it was interesting that you could identify so much with the Digimon themselves and the human characters were I, I would say that they were almost the annoying sidekicks at times. Oh yeah, constantly. It, it's like, a, I, it's I would, akin to when we watch some of the Transformers movies. I would honestly gladly play or watch like a Digimon series that involves no humans. Yeah, I want to know how the digital the digital world functions without humans intervening. Like it's fun have to have the tamers and like as a kid I was super into it. But I'd almost just be perfectly happy just having, like, the crew without anything else. Mm -hmm. Guessing you never liked War Games either. I thought War Games was boring. What was War Games? That was the one where they're up against Diabar Diabaramon. Hmm. Uh, that was the one where they emailed him to death, and it was effectively just Summer Wars. Oh. Though reali realistically, Summer Wars was just, uh, war games. Yeah, for Digimon, I only saw the first four seasons. 
Well, it was the movie. I never saw the movie. Ah. Uh, the, the movie was interesting because it was effectively, like, four of the Digimon movies mushed together. Oh. Uh, which was kind of neat because, like, some of the movies were straight up just, like, OVAs. Uh, mm -hmm. Including the one that actually set the scene for uh, Tai and Kairi uh, running into Agumon. Mm. Like, well before the main series. Yeah. Because effectively, was it Tai or Kairi? One of them was like, I think Kairi was like, she wandered off and like found the Agumon and Tai had to kind of go save her. And it was a Greymon versus a Tyranimon in the streets. <laughs> and it was kind of cool. And the animation was slightly different. Huh. It was a third Digimon movie that didn't have any humans in it. Interesting. Oh, I'll have to look into that. And like, realistically, I will probably still gladly play the next couple Digimon games. And I'll go back to Hacker's Memory. Um, or Cyber Sleuth Hacker's Memory. I think I'll probably go back to that and finish it someday. It just, it was one of those where you had to do all these like investigation things, but it was all just boring garbage. Mm -hmm. Where you would just like do side quests for people in the name of plot. And gosh, that was the moment where I was just like, this is stupid. Especially when like 90% of it was like kind of quote unquote character development where you realized all of the main cast were just creepy and awkward. Mm hmm. I mean, we've talked about this a billion times, but I'm just not at all interested in, like, thinly veiled wish fulfillment. Oh, yes. I remember there was, what, some secretary lady or some... Oh, no, she was, she was good. She was creepy as hell. Yeah, like, but... Yeah, she was, she was playing up the sexuality a little bit. Uh, but she was straight up, like, Crusader Mon in a human body. Mm -hmm. uh, but it the old shows were they were kids. Yeah, yeah. the The Cyber Sleuth games are supposed to be like slightly more Teens. mature. Yeah. The problem is they were also less imaginative feeling, which was kind of a letdown. Mm -hmm. You know, I I spent the entirety of Cyber Sleuth being like, all right, when are we going to the digital world? When are we going to the digital world? And then we finally got to the digital world. And wasn't it just a bunch of hallways or something weird? Yeah. And then you left immediately. That is, that's depressing. Cause I the was digital, mad. The digital world was I remember way more interesting than the real world. Jungles and, and deserts and... And so I'm looking forward to Digimon Survive, which I think mm -hmm. just got delayed. Okay. Uh, unsurprisingly, I mean, the world being what it is... Uh, just because that is supposed to be a little bit darker and, like, a smaller focus. Still kind of in the real world, but more focused on the Digimon being characters. That's good. But I would, I would love to play a Digimon game where... Uh, gosh. Have we played any good survival games together? I kind of what the RE Legends game was supposed to be. Remember... Yeah, well, or you had the farm and such. But we yeah. never got around to that because we couldn't even get past the first cutscene. Yeah, because, like, I liked Digimon World Next Order, but it was kind of boring. It was all on rails and whatnot. And I want just this big, expansive world to explore with one partner and maybe a friend. Uh, Kind of like that other... What was that Pokemon game that... Uh, Pokemon clone game that we kick-started? Kindred, Kindred Fates? Oh, well, there's Temtem. What, what else? No, no, there? not Temtem. The other one. Uh, the one that, like, you specifically wanted me to kickstart with a real-time combat. Oh, oh, that one. That's the one where you actually take control of your Yeah, creature and it's, and and it's real-time and you're running around fighting and... And th they can split into different directions. Yeah, and you don't control how they evolve. And also, if they die, they die. So you yeah. have this little shrine where, like, you can get their souls back and such, but if there are ones that can permanently die, and then you have this little shrine for all of your dead creatures. Which is a little gruesome. At I the think same that's time, called Kindred Fates. Yeah, at the same time, if you think about it, 
at some you can't it's interesting how the first pokemon movie talks about how you know it's wrong for you to force these pokemon to fight and you know a pokemon's lot in life isn't just to be mo the most powerful like that's not what they're supposed to be they have thoughts and feelings and and then everything else is just pit fighting uh, and then how you, the, they they try to rationalize the reason why Pokemon fight at all with they enjoy it. It's like exercise for them. They love it. Yeah. Uh, or they don't want to let their trainers down. And as I've gotten older, I kind I look at that and I go, maybe I don't want to be a Pokemon master. Yeah. And also, why is it hand holding me like? Why is it so handholdy when most of the players are probably young adults at this point? Yeah, I'm curious what the player base is, but also like, even as kids, we were pretty smart. We could figure it out if it was harder mm -hmm. or more complex or different. I just wish that there would be a, have you played Pokemon games before? Yes. Well, then I, I think we don't need to have all these tutorials. I, I think, um, I don't think Game Freak wants to make Pokemon games anymore. Mm-hmm. Because... They're, they're trying to use the Pokemon brand in different genres. Well, not really. They tried that, mm -hmm. sort of. But, like, most of the side Pokemon games were made by other people. Well, hey, they, I mean, what about Pokemon Snap? Uh, I think that is the mainline thing. Mm -hmm. I wish they did more stuff like that. Like, I I know Game Freak... And also, Freak... we never got around to playing the rest of Mystery Dungeon. Yeah, it came out at a really bad time. It did come out at a bad time. I really liked I think that was Chikorita. immediately after we got back from vacation. Chikorita was so cute. Chikorita was super cute. I just... The and environments were, were so ugly. Like... They were. I... But then again, would... it was also the isometric, you have to move. And you're I mean, it was a screen? dungeon crawler. Dungeon crawl? But, like, I would love a Pokemon game that had environments this big and expansive. And you were a Pokemon? We're not. Like, hell, I'd be fine with being a trainer, you know, just being a guy standing, you know, at the bottom of the screen and you just see my Pokemon fighting. It'd be virtually indistinguishable from what it currently is. People are talking about the MOBA. I know a lot of people are going to boycott the MOBA because it's. I just made don't by care. Tencent. It's a MOBA and it's being made by Tencent. Mm -hmm. Like, if Game Freak themselves made it, I'd give it a shot. Maybe? But We, we had the Pokemon po Coliseum games, but that was because it was the first time... And that wasn't could... a MOBA. That was just a... That was just Pokemon battling, but in 3D. Yeah, that was the which whole was reason. super impressive at the time. But I love them for the mini games. The mini games were great. And so, like, yeah, if Game Freak wanted to put out a... Uh, if they wanted to put out, like just effectively poke Mario party? Yeah. Po I'd be so poke happy. Party. Why not do poke party where you choose a starter Pokemon as your character and you have all of the board game elements and you have all the mini games. I was you talking to Clefairy, Clefairy, I was talking to uh, Clefairy, I think it was retro Clefairy, Clefairy, Clefairy. and we were talking about how utterly disappointed we were in Mario party for mm -hmm. the Switch, mm -hmm. and how like how great of a concept it could have been, well, but the boards were boring, and they, they seemed really small too. My favorite experience was Mario Party Two. Yeah, Mario Party Two was probably peak Mario Party. I think the mini games and some of the board designs got better, but the fact that it kind of told a story and like your characters would dress up and the different themes. I, I really liked the that reveal really cool. where at the end everything was tallied. And you would see who'd be the one to face off against Bowser. Uh, it was really cute and charming. I really liked the the haunted level. Everyone was a witch or a wizard. Mm hmm They also had the like Indiana Jones as I think I liked adventure. the space one. The space one, yeah. Yeah, because that one had a lot of locked off parts that were hard to get to. Uh, but if you did, it was really rewarding. Yeah, I felt that the the newest Mario Party, the Maps were small. The mini games were few in number. Yeah, few in number. And, and the motion controls did not add anything. Mm -hmm. And 
What they should have done was just used it as a massive DLC pr uh, platform. Like, imagine if you had to spend maybe X amount of money every couple of months uh, to get the latest couple of maps and minigames. But, you know, by the end of it, you have hundreds of maps and minigames all pulled from, like, previous titles, and you, they kind of port them up. So, like, you have one Mario Party game per generation. Mm -hmm. So here is Mario Party Switch, and uh, it comes out as a launch game with, like, four new maps, and then a couple months in, they port every previous map and minigame up as, like, kind of one uber DLC pack. Uh, for like an additional 30 bucks. I'll let the money grub if they keep it iterating. I don't care anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then, you know, after they've ported all of the older stuff up uh, so that you can have access to it on the latest version, then they start coming up with new things and then just kind of rinse repeat until every subsequent Mario Party game is just nuts. Yeah, because do you remember when we had that fun time at the, it was the retro game bar with yeah. With friends and how we were playing Mario Party 3. Like, just going through a bunch of the mini games. Yeah. And so, like, once this whole business is over... I mean, heck, uh, even before that, if we wanted to... Uh, there's a... Uh, the older ones uh, via an emulators. Uh, they support netplay if we wanted to play Mario Party with friends at some point. Hmm. 